Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are looking at the release version of automation, Unreal 4 automation. But it's not really the release version, but rather the first open beta release, which you can play for the first time. This video is about giving you an overview of what is in the game, what is not and what's still coming and so on. And uh, also how to get into it and what to expect really. So let's start at the beginning. How do you even get this version to launch? Well, first of all, you have to opt into the open beta branch of uh, automation and that you do via your Steam library. You right click on automation in your Steam library, choose properties, then navigate to the betas tab and there you select the open beta, not the closed one, but the open beta and uh, that one doesn't require any password and then Steam will automatically download and update your current automation. So uh, that is all working nicely then so now you have that game sitting there and you must launch it with the launcher option so not the no launcher option but rather with the launcher and in the launcher you will find to the lower right a button which says play open beta and uh, yeah then after a pretty long black screen without any indication that something is happening we really need to fix that at some point um, this menu will come up so don't fret when you see a big black loading screen for half an eternity it needs to build quite a few things and on the slower systems it might take a long time but uh, faster systems I, I guess like mm, 10 to 20 seconds loading time and then you should reach the main menu and in the main menu you see we have the sandbox button and that is the only only option for right now uh, much more will of course come much more content scenarios will start working again uh, and uh, so cars and engines here and the tutorials of course but that is not in this very first release of the open beta yet so um, also your old saves do not work this is basically a completely new game so there's no compatibility with any any old stuff you have made you might want to select one of the incomplete translations by just toggling through here or you might want to check the settings where you can change what kinds of measurements you want to use for the game. We haven't quite tested it for Imperial units yet so there may be instances and places where they don't uh, properly apply it. That is considered a bug then of course you don't have to report it it's rather obvious if uh, something like that goes wrong and we will go through the game and uh, fix up plenty and plenty of bugs in the coming weeks. One thing to note here with the uh, first selections is that we haven't quite made sure that uh, mid and rear engine cars are working properly. I think there might still be some calculation issues with those, uh, although you should be able to put an engine in and so on. That that kind of works, but somehow the calculations are still messed up and that is something we are going to look in very soon as well. So front engine cars it is for now. And with these front engine cars, uh, there's also one uh, pretty big uh, bug in there, which is that um, the gearboxes aren't quite placed right. But before you even get there, you can play around with the colors. That should all be working. So you can make your own, uh, own style colors. Just don't forget to save and then exit out again. Here you select uh, which kind of uh, part of the car is affected by your color selection. And you can just choose freely, for instance, uh, mirrors, and then you make them uh, chrome, chrome mirrors, because they are they are so beautiful. For the fixtures, you will see that there are many fixtures that just have crosses on them, and that is partially due to that our thumbnail builder currently was a little bit broken, and uh, that's unfortunate, that's something that is going to be fixed, but there are fixtures hiding behind these X's as well. I'm not quite sure if they are all fixed up, in these fixtures, um, but let's, let's just try one. Ah yeah, there's a thumbnail right there. And as you can see, whoa, it's looking like it's working. Isn't this cool? 
Yes. Um, all right, so you will find some some fixtures working in here at least so that you can try things out. When it comes to the engine selection, you have access to uh, inline freeze, including turbos, of course. So that's a new addition. And no inline fives just yet. They are not finished. And in here, V60s, uh, V60 degrees, we have the standard uh, 6, 8 and 12 you are used to. But also we have the 90 degrees. And in the 90 degree options, we have the 6 and the 8, as well as the new 10 cylinder engine. Don't forget that you can indeed set the engine visibility with this little menu on the side here, which you need to fold out first. Some more good news for those who have been following our little dev updates. Uh, I mentioned last time that we had performance issues because we were running on a single thread. That has been fixed and we are now back to the kind of performance uh, that you can expect from future iterations of the game as well. Uh, apart from a few optimizations here and there, of course, which uh, probably speed it up and not make it slower. Uh, what you're uh, going to experience here, you can take as a decent estimate of what the final version will run as. Uh, potentially, this one currently is a little slower than what you will get in the end. One thing to note here is that all turbo sounds are still missing to my knowledge and they have not been properly implemented yet, but they will be coming in uh, the next update or two. All the engine stats should be working just fine, although we did have some issue with uh, knocking engines, not really transporting the engine properly to the car, even after you fix the knock. In that case, if this still is an issue, just reload the engine and that should be fixed. Another little thing here to not forget is that these are the stresses on the engine and you need to switch around to actually see the flow of the engine. All engine sounds are in the game. I think I did hear some little clacking noise in the V10, uh, which shouldn't be there. But other than that, I think everything is in, apart from, of course, the turbo, turbo sounds. So one thing I wanted to mention about the gearbox, which I hinted at before, is that currently they are not being placed all correctly. Currently, the um, front wheel longitudinal is the only variant which requires more space under the engine. While rear wheel drive longitudinal and all wheel drive longitudinal uh, require exactly the same space, which isn't realistic, that will be fixed. A uh, new feature which I think I've mentioned before is that now on the uh, wheels tab you can actually flare out the wheel arches so that you don't have to go back and do that somewhere else. Worth mentioning here is that no, the downforce slider is not broken. It only activates for the actual downforce tray where you then can add plenty of downforce if you wanted to. For the cooling airflow slider, I need to tell you that there are a few fields missing here of information, of important information, but the cooling capacity you see up there is the one which is applied to the car and the unit is the kilojoules per second as before. And uh, at a slider setting of 50, you are exactly at the uh, required cooling. So uh, there will be no penalty for your reliability. If you go below that, the car will be more uh, streamlined, but uh, yeah, it will suffer on the uh, reliability part of things. For the interior and entertainment, nothing really has changed, but on the power steering side, this is something we're currently working out. Currently, it's uh, it's not giving the correct stats in this version I'm playing right now, but for the release version, which is coming a little later from when I record this video, that should be fixed. It may not be though. So uh, don't fret when you see that uh, no power steering is actually the best option. Um, that will be fixed very soon. So uh, then we have the traction aids, which you can see as the list of the old options in old automation, but additive. So um, if you want to read about this, uh, do we have the text in there? No, we don't have that yet. Okay, that's a shame. Um, but yes, this is basically the list of traction aids in old automation, um, but they are cumulative. 
So the further down you go, so this one for instance would be the launch control and all the other options selected. And this one would just be ABS. Oh, that was interesting. I just managed to uh, somehow uh, select everything apart from a drive type. And on the final calculations, it was just calculating. It wasn't crashing. It sure was displaying a Lua error here, but it didn't crash. It was just sitting there and waiting, and then I selected it and everything fixed itself. That's the power of the new Unreal version, which isn't quite as finicky with, um, with errors happening in the calculations. That's both a good and bad thing, of course, but um, yeah, it seems to be working. Don't for Kids, don't forget to select a drive type. It's kind of important. One thing that isn't implemented yet, which is really important for balancing reasons and the way you, where you will be exploiting the hell out of it, is uh, ride height is not properly affecting bottoming out right now. So uh, you can make very low cars with very little penalty for it. Um, so that is certainly something we are going to fix. And you can see how the ride height is still affecting things. Yay, we make a little off-road buggy thing. The Markets tab is uh, probably the one which needs the most polish still. Um, it's kind of working like the in, in auto automation. It doesn't show you any framing for the top categories. But as soon as you've built your car, the top categories are appearing on the sides. Or at least they should be, which they currently aren't. Let's see if we can fix, fix that for the version which we are actually releasing to you. In case it still looks like that, uh, don't worry, that is so obvious. We, we are going to fix it for the next um, update, which should be pretty early next week. Um, probably we are going to have a one to two bug fix releases per week schedule, and that would be potentially like Tuesday and Friday or something like that. All right, so now you've built a car and maybe you have put some effort into making it look pretty. So uh, then you can take it to the photo scene. And then you arrive here and see like, oh shit, there's no car. Um, well, just press fix and it will appear. <laughs> That's kind of a workaround to uh, it not being there in the first place. Unfortunately, we weren't quite able to fix the controls up here, but you do have a way of focusing now. And uh, let's rotate the car. Yes, like this. And uh, you can now focus, but you have to use this function, which is uh, not the most user-friendly uh, of all. So you have to manually type in the number of meters of focal distance, focus distance. All right, now I've found the focus. It's very easy to focus on some of the profile here. And then you can just zoom out again and you will have it. And, uh, well, as soon as you move around, that focal distance, of course, is wrong again. That's also a way to focus. You just set a number and then just move around. That will be fixed pretty soon as well. But, um, yeah, uh, another thing which we might have to uh, concede not fixing right now which will come in future is that if you're running more than full HD, you might run into problems taking photos because um, texture memory. Uh, yeah, we are uh, rendering at four times the resolution in the photo scene. And that may be a little high for 4K system. So just uh, if, if you get crashes here, that will probably be why. And just try running it uh, windowed in 1080p and you, you should be fine. So what more is there to tell you? Well, we have a massive list of bugs still to go through and sort out and that will uh, take uh, definitely like the next two weeks. And uh, that also means that we currently aren't really looking for uh, bug reports from your end, apart from real bad crash bugs, which are very important to us. Uh, so whenever you have a hard crash bug, Please report it. If you have minor bugs, well, we are probably already seeing that. And if we haven't fixed it, uh, when I say that we are pretty happy with the version, then you should start shouting at us. Within the next, say, two weeks, you should see quite a bit of progress in polishing this version up and we will be moving closer to a fully public release of this. We will keep the launcher option for the Unreal version uh, even once we go public, uh, fully public, into the, um, the public branch of the uh, automation install. 
And that is because, well, we don't have the campaign in here yet. So we want you to be able to continue playing the campaign in auto automation, whatever save games you have there. And um, fiddle around with the cars and all the shiny graphics in the new Unreal 4 version simultaneously without having to switch builds constantly and down re-download gigabytes of data. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed and will enjoy this new release of automation. Definitely a big milestone, even though it's still a, an unpolished one. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, what you have to say about it. So, hope you enjoy and see you guys next time.